I'm really happy now to be joined by Dr. Nguyen Van Fong from Vietnam. Uh, Nguyen is a uh, tremendous surgeon, but an expert too in, in the topic we want to talk about, rheumatic heart disease, rheumatic valve disease. Nguyen, in your country and in, in your section of Asia, um, you are one of the top surgeons. What's, what's the burden? How big of a problem is rheumatic uh, valve disease? Uh, well, uh, as you know, Vietnam is a country in the Southeast Asia. And in, South, in Southeast Asia, rheumatic uh, disease was the most common valve disease of the region, uh, including Vietnam. And uh, uh, we have 80% uh, of uh, valve patients was rheumatic. Really, 80%? 80%. That's incredible. Yeah. And uh, uh, the rheumatic disease uh, can evolve uh, to uh, any age of uh, the patient. Right. Uh, the youngest patient at this surgery was six years old. Six years old. And okay. the oldest patient, 65 years old. Goodness. Yeah. And uh, most of the patients were very poor and not uh, very good, uh, having good, not good health care. Right. Uh, and they uh, suffer the disease for a very long time and do surgery very lately. So in my surgery of a rheumatic patient, we had uh, more than 60% our patient had atrial fibrillation. So you, you're getting them late in the disease. 60% have yeah, atrial fibrillation. Yeah, yeah, I have before surgery. Okay. And more than 30% of them uh, do surgery in advanced days of cardiac failure. So, so they're really in bad heart failure yeah, from right. mixed valve disease. Yeah. So, so you're, you have a tremendous burden of disease. How do you approach this? Uh, because, you, as you said, these are often people who are poor, they don't have good medical follow-up, and as, as Tuisak was talking earlier, if you put a prosthetic, a metallic prosthetic valve in them with anticoagulant, they, mm. they might get lost to follow-up. I mean, so how do you approach yeah, this? Yeah, so in, in, in that situation, I think that reconstructive surgery is more important than a valve replacement, especially right. for, the, for the poor people uh, who cannot go to the hospital regularly right. after surgery. So if we repair the valve, it's much better than for, uh, for the patient in follow-up, uh, for the complication, everything, especially in children. And uh, we, uh, we do uh, uh, repair the valve more than 90%. Really? Really? 90%. That's amazing. But, you know, I'm, I'm thinking back of, you know, since I'm an echo person, I look at these valves and they're all scarred and calcified and retracted. So how do you go about repairing the valve? Well, we, for the calcification, uh, we don't go too much aggressive on that. Yeah, we, uh, we, we just balance, uh, estimate uh, the uh, long-term reserve of the surgery in, uh, in uh, case by case. Okay. Uh, in case if the valve lesion is so serious, it's better we change valve. Right. No, but we absolutely. always think about reconstructive uh, surgery first. Mm -hmm. And uh, in case we cannot do anything, we change the valve. If, if you have a, a valve that you can do reconstructive, do you do, you do some peeling of the valve and then you use autologous pericardium and neocords? Are you doing all that? We try, everything. We try that. everything, yeah. So for the rheumatic valve, uh, number one, we try to uh, open lastly uh, the commissure oh, if sure. uh, they have sure. a commissural fusion. Uh, we try to remove some fibrous tissues, even calcification to, uh, to mobilize the leaflet. We uh, should dissect the secondary cord of uh, the posterior leaflet to uh, increase the movement of the valve. And uh, then uh, in some cases, we should uh, extend the leaflet with pericardial pass. And of so, course, we need the ring after that. that I mean, it's, a, it's amazing. You know, when you, when you come to a meeting like this, and you know, where rheumatic disease is important, but, but you look at these valves that are not scarred and retracted and all of that, um, it's, it's, do you find techniques here that you think can be applied to the rheumatic patient? Some, some technique we can apply, for example, for the artificial cotton. Uh, we can do also for the rheumatic valve and uh, uh, the selection of, ring, of the, the prosthetic ring use, we also apply for the, the rheumatic patient. What, but is it completely different? different. That's what I'm Completely thinking. different, so that we should select the technique to use, uh, not, you know, for every case. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking almost that we learned from you, because, you know, you're dealing with really deformed, scarred valves, and so, um, do you see, are you training other surgeons in, in um, Asia, Southeast Asia, on, on these approaches? So actually, I, um, 
I have, I organize a mitral valve repair course in my uh, hospital uh, two times per year. Cool. And uh, this time I received just uh, a small group of surgeons, maximum 10 surgeons this time, and they do surgery with me. Very yeah, good. Not uh, just listen. Uh, the, they uh, actually the, watch. Yeah. They're in the so, OR with Yeah, you. they come to the OT and uh, swap and uh, do surgery with me. And uh, besides that, I also travel to other uh, Asian countries and do some uh, live demonstration uh, surgery in my travel repair in the other country like uh, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, uh, mainland uh, China, India. Uh, and so, on. so you're really you're you're exporting your knowledge to those countries, yeah. which I think is very very important. Well, you do you do a, um, a very very good job. I mean, you, uh, the surgeons that I know are, are are very appreciative of your technology and your technique. And thank you very much thank for you very visiting much. with us. Thank you very been much. Been good. Thank you. Thank you.